Bells and Effects Top 10 2019. We're not technically closing out, right? The next year is the closing out of the decade, right? We have to go through, right, right, right. But whatever. We're going into 2020. But 2019, Nick and I were super busy. Didn't do a shit ton of videos or you reviews. Haven't, you haven't seen us on this... Uh... On your screens for a while. Yeah. I don't think. But we're, we're throwing you guys a little uh, a little gift, end of the year gift, with a top 10 list that we think there's still vital shit that people are putting out. And it's a good year for some good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. And uh, I think, again, man, I think we, I think, didn't we mention it last year that we, we really loved how people were developing really great synth pedals? That def- the Enzo. That definitely continued into this year. Fuck yes. And so, you know, like, what do you think? You want me to just rip into it? Fuck it. So, uh, Source Audio, C4 pedal. This is a weird one. I think they just did a couple, like, really early hand-painted ones and sent one over so they don't look like this. Uh, this is a really, really, like, deep, powerful... As always, all the Source Audio stuff is super deep. Um, and it's good out of the box, but this is one of those things where, you know, you plug it into a computer and then you edit, like, all the waveforms on drop-down menus and all this crazy stuff. And they had been talking to us about this. Maybe even... We may have even known about this pedal when we were doing last year's Yeah, we did. 10. Right, right. So, Definitely. and, you know, uh, with, like, a very, very highly digital pedal like this, it's like a computer. Do you know what I mean? You're editing, you're you're almost creating the sound you are on your computer, you know, with a mouse or whatever and a bunch of menus and all that crazy stuff. So it's like less of a, I don't know, I think of pedals like that a little differently where they're not so much, someone built this amazing thing. It's like someone developed the technology to allow us to create the sounds that we want out of, a pedal like this right so and using that technology for a synth type pedal is probably the best most appropriate use of that do you know what i mean being able to edit absolutely and create on a computer so this does well you'll hear some of them in a second i've got three sounds dialed into this thing which i used quite a bit the last year but like it does all the purple pedal stuff it is purple too but you know the purple line six and just all those sounds and just the fact that you can almost start from scratch and just dig into it is a really, really cool thing. So, Source Audio C4. So check this shit out on bass and check out with fretless bass how, how gnarly the fucking slides come into. And then here, Boss, their synth pedal, simplistic in its uh, design. Uh, you're not really going to fuck up with this one because it tracks great. It's easy to put, put it in. I have it on my Manson board because it's so simple. And I just can't say enough how much I love this pedal. It was like a mini version of this. Correct. Well, that's the one. This right. is a 300. Right. So that's one 300th of this. And it was it's... You you're not really not missing out on a whole lot on that thing. No, you out of the box you're gonna go you're gonna go with this thing, this thing smokes so many in its price range. I mean I think it's a electro electro harmonics synth eater because it just smokes that one. And you know just just trust me on this. If you get this you're gonna thank me and Nick 
because we're going out. This is the one. If you haven't started with synths yet, you're going to start with this one and you're going to fucking rule your band. And the difference between that and this is this is out of the box. Like, oh, I'm just turning knobs. Right. Like, all the sounds are there for you to just, like, tweak knob style. And it truly, right out of the box, you just kind of you know find a random setting and it's awesome right and if you know like you're on tour and you lose one or it breaks or whatever you can go to well, your favorite store Sam Ash or whatever and go grab another because they're everywhere because it's boss also true some knobs and just found a sound as I was saying doesn't matter very easy to find a good sound out of this thing Closing out the 2019 synth pedal palooza, uh, another, that's funny, this is the synth one. Everyone, I mean, one thing's for certain, no one really got that creative with names for their synth pedals, no. but I mean, that's kind of cool. Uh, the Keeley synth one, um, this one is a really, really basic version of all the other synths that we've been talking about. Um, does kind of like a couple different wave shapes, kind of does some like fuzzy filtery things you can also turn this into a uh a boss what's the rare black one that's stupid that just does the swells slow, slow gear. gear the slow, slow gear. gear this does a slow gear you know for a zillionth of the price of buying a real slow gear but um was we were really stoked when keely talked about make it a synth pedal was his first one and you know uh, it's really cool, really simple, probably the simplest out of the three that we've talked about, but, uh, you know, different. All three of these are different synth pedals and just how, just how synthesizer are all different. So are the synth pedals. Yeah. Like there's 10 zillion synthesizer keyboards out there that all do a little bit different flavors and different inter interpretations of them. And this is just cool to see Keeley, who's known as we've talked about a million times. Oh yeah. He's known for his compressors and his overdrives. But the very first time I met Keeley ever, however many years ago it was, he was like, I like doing weird stuff. I just don't really ever get the opportunity to do it. So when he gets to do something cool like this, you should always pay attention to that because if it's like if Robert Keeley is putting his brain power into something outside the box, it's going to be very good. Yeah. So and and please leave comments on how great that imitation of Keeley was that Nick just did. Well if the if I was really gonna go for it, I'd be like, I just love doing weird stuff. I, I wanna do weird things. I wanna do more fucked up sounds, but I don't really get the opportunity to do them. <laughs> if you guys ever met him, that's what he said. That one's like. a little better. <laughs> to the left for just dry guitar and then you get your uh, slow gear sound. For 
way less. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Check this one out. Earthquaker didn't release a ton of shit this year, but they did release the plumes, and this dude is fire on bass and guitar. I don't know. We didn't plug anything else into it, right? But whatever. It doesn't matter. What are you going to plug an ukulele into it? I mean, pro ukulele would probably sound pretty good through that thing. You mean like this one, Nick? <laughs> We'd need a contact like on that. Yeah, hell That yeah. would sound good to the plumes, though. Hell yeah. I'd be the plumes make everything rock harder. And so there's not too much, you know, that we can say about it that we didn't already say in our video. It's an overdrive for $99. Come on, man. You, you, you need to up your sound. You got a hundred bucks. Come on. You can... on, on honestly, this isn't like, uh, let's just talk about the plumes because we thought it was okay. It's like, it's a really good overdrive pedal. Right. I mean, it's, it's sort of like tube screamery but honestly in every instance that i've used it i've kind of like dialed it more towards like a really mellow ktr clon type sound or something and it's not a transparent overdrive or whatever but like you can get it into that kind of ballpark and it's really good i used it a lot in different scenarios yeah so you know if you just want to come up with a hundred dollars go drive an uber or lyft for like a half a day and then go get one of these man just rob someone plumes <laughs> Bob Weston sound. It's going through like a Fender, uh, a Fender Twin kind of uh, thing, and then with Jazzmaster with the Curtis Novak, uh, Jazzmaster Wide Range. Curtis Novak. Just when we're talking about a uh, an overdrive pedal, people might care about that. You know what I mean? Curtis so, Novak. <laughs> This looks familiar, right? It's just a particle. Really? It's not just a particle. It's the particle V2, V2. Uh, with presets and just some new cool stuff. And we're not going to get deep into what this pedal is. Uh, granular delay. Um, but, you know, the whole thing about the particle before was Henry Kaiser was probably the one who... And I don't even know if he mastered the pedal, but he had like a sound out of the particle. Henry Kaiser could probably, do, you could probably like put it a, a particle behind your back and mix up all the knobs and he could take it and like recalibrate it perfectly to the sound that he wants. But I feel like even for me, for us, it was difficult to get a consistent like, wait, 
what setting was that? Where was the right. freeze? You know what I mean? Right. So to have the presets in there was like a very, very crucial update to big this jump, pedal. Big jump, big jump. So it's like, and, and you know, I have, I guess, four sounds out of this one. I have two of these, matter of fact, and I always need to be like, wait, which one is the one? I need to make a mark on this or something. You know, this is the one that has my four sounds out of it. So it's like, whereas before it was like, Okay, cool. I want to play at the particle. Let me sit down and come up with something that I like, which because it's so, there's so much depth to it, it could take you a long time to come across something that you're like, yes, that's the sound. I, this is all to say. Now you get to just save that. Yeah. And that's a very, very crucial thing for a pedal like this to have presets on it. So Red Panda, as usual, will always rep them because that's a genius over there creating pedals and... I'm telling you, that is hella smart that he put presets in it because I bang my head against the wall trying to remember the shit I tried to do on it. And then now, I know I have all four of mine set. Many, many years in a row, it's always just like, it's the same thing. Red Panda is one of the most forward-thinking, top, top, top uh, pedal manufacturers. Boom. <laughs> other preset boom because the particle has presets now Okay, I don't know if you guys saw our video that we did on this, but we did do one. And we really tripped out, as usual, on Chase Bliss's, you know, crazy-ass, multi-knobbed and switched up design stuff. But this is a collaboration, and it was uh, Old Blood Noise and Drollo. Correct. <laughs> Which... I just now, it's like since I became aware of it, I just see it more often and I've seen their stuff and it's really cool. Right, really right. Cool things. So it's like basically half of, of, of uh, uh, a collaboration with uh, one company on one side and another company on the other side. Um, watch our video if you want to know more about it. But I, I just find it is super musical. It's a great way to put two different types of concepts together, reverb, and then the, the sampling element of it. It's just... It's, and it's also, it's a tight color, man. Look at that peach, baby peach. Mm, salmon? I thought it was peach. Maybe salmon. Uh, potato, potato, you know. Shit. All right. But it's still, and, 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 and like the name says, mood, it'll put you in a mood. It was also the first Chase Bliss pedal that I, like, sat down to learn and learned how to do all the stuff and was like, oh, okay, that's how that works. That's what that button does. So I, I mean, he makes great pedals. I, I really do dig his pedals. And Definitely. We've been, we've been, you know, working together, you know, Joel over at Chase Bliss and, I, you know, since he did the first vibrato pedal. So, you know, now finally a collaboration one. I mean, that's crazy. So I thought that deserved to be on our list. Watch anyway. out for that blooper pedal. I reckon that might end up being on next year's list. Boom. I'm going to have to, after this, go back and watch our video on this thing. Because I'm like, whoa, it's been a month since I plugged this thing in. And I'm like, oh, I can't remember how to do this or that. But I found a sound that sounds cool. <laughs> Thank you. 
a good mood. Let's see if I can put you in a bad mood, Nick. Fender jumped into the pedal game a couple years ago. Yeah. Last year. I don't remember. Again, you... back up in it. Right. Yep. The stash. The little magnetic stash. The little secret stash. Um, so they've actually put out quite a few. I mean, we did the first batch with them. Right. And then they kind of jumped to just like slamming us yeah, with hammering. more and more pedals. So like I'm I'm behind and I know you weren't you like you were like wait they put out a new fuzz cuz they had a fuzz before this called the pelt fuzz which was really good and I liked it and checked it out and thought it was cool and then just randomly was like hanging over there at some point and somebody was like hey did you hear about the trapper? I'm like I don't know about the trapper. It's a dual fuzz. Sure, let me take it home and check it out. And it's just a really 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 good fuzz. But also it's like a weird fuzz. There are some very bizarre things that it kind of can do, like the Velcro-y, kind of sputtery, like, strangeness that you would not associate, like, a brand new Fender pedal with. It's like a little out for Fender. Um, but yeah, do we'll do, well, maybe we'll do a video, like a proper video on this. Um, dual fuzz, you know, and then you can switch between them, and there's an octave up, and like, pretty standard, but... You know, it's kind of like rare, I feel like, to be like, whoa, that's a fuzz that I really, really like. Because we're so saturated with fuzz pedals now that, like, we like them all. There's all, every fuzz pedal, like, I feel like it's almost, it's harder to make a fuzz pedal that people don't like at this point. Because it's like, you guys, everyone, all the builders figured out how to make good fuzz pedals. It's really not that like complicated to come up with a fuzz we're all happy with. So it's almost, now it's more of just like the special little nuances in each one where it's like, ooh, I like that one because it does this thing. Or this one does this little kind of, you know, special thing just slightly different than this one, and I lean towards that. So this this has got a couple of little special things in it which made me really stoked on the Fender Trapper fuzz. It's just nice to have a big, giant company like Fender still, like, really wanting to stay up in the pedal game, stay in anything that that I think they feel that musicians are at. And so then, boom, they hammered out a bunch of really, really good pedals. Cool designs, little magnetic case. You know, I I, I think that that just goes to show you that there's people over there who who want to make sure Fender stays relevant as possible in every factor of the game.
Yo, Game Changer Audio. So this is, we did a, a, a little video on this one, and we hung out with these dudes, like, what was it, a year ago, right? And, yeah, um, after it was after it would have been last January. Yeah, and so they kicked Nick and I down the, these uh, this weird pedal that does a weird type of distortion that goes through this tube and it has like gas in it. Yeah, something. it has gas in it. And it has like a voltage. It's like super high voltage. And and the cool thing about this pedal is that the way that it's a distorted fuzz type pedal, but it also has got this gate. So as the input, you know, starts to uh, fade out, so does the pedal. The pedal will just crunch out. And then boom, dead stops if you want, whatever. And I, it just sounds completely different than any fuzz or distortion pedal at totally. And it also sounds unbelievable on drums, keyboards, anything, man. This thing is really, these are dudes who were like, you know, hey, let's get fucking wild on some shit because I we think that the fuzz fucking world is, is boring and whatever. I don't know if they actually ever said that. So get this. <laughs> All right, so of course Jack White gets to corner the market and get credit for putting this thing in in fame, but it is his third man, you know, collaboration with Game Changer, and so I think pretty much this pedal is the same as that one, but this right here is different. So this is the different octaves. So it's kind of like sub harmonic sections over on this side, and over here is the upper octave. So you can do like Octavia shit, ring modulator shit, bit crushing. This thing is dope, and in fact, I would even say this is cool, but I think this is cool, especially, of course, because the dudes who play four strings, me, me, bass, this motherfucker hammers low end. So, dude, and it's hard as fuck, and you know, maybe you're not a White Stripe fan, it don't matter, it's his fucking record label, it's not him. So then, would you play, like, what would be the first thing you'd play through that, like, Boom, 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 boom. There'll be boom, some fucking knuckleheads boom, who will do that, boom, but boom, that boom, won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I immediately started, I immediately tried to just do like gnarly fucking, you know, grimy bass set lines and stuff. And of course, I'm on the fretless. So it's super tight when I'm sliding down the fretless. And as I slow down the slide and the decay of the instrument starts to fade, this thing starts fucking getting gritty and it's ill as fuck. So I'm super stoked. At, and look at the switch momentary or latch. Boom. Mm. So if you want it to be firing off the octaves and shit, boom. Plasma coil. Here, check this out. I'm bumping the, the subharmonic. Imagine that. And then I'm bumping hard on the low end. Here, I'm rolling my tone knob down because it's it actually is activating a lot easier for me and, and making the note distinction a lot better. So check this out. But if I open up that watch, didn't realize that on the third man one, the uh, the electricity, the xenon tube, the xenon tube, you can see the yellow bolt there, not the blue. Bolt. Oh, word. Drone Ranger by Ranger FX. So in January, we were at NAM and we just popped by to say hi to David and he had this thing on display and we were just like, what? What is that? This is the strangest. I mean, it's definitely the coolest looking pedal at this wind's coolest looking pedal of the year. 
if that was a category. Um, I don't know. This is pretty hard when this thing starts firing up, but you're right. I like this recessed shit. Yeah, and, yeah. like, all the different panels on this. He gets these, like, this isn't just one that he's, like, he picks out. Like, he makes it, you know, and he right. hasn't made like this. That's true, um, right. This is, like, a really bizarre pedal. This might be the strangest one of the batch. It just... It creates different drone tones, which I will try and do a proper video on this if we can find the time this year, next year, to sit down. We'll we'll start ripping these out, but creates like two drone sounds. Um, I don't know what the what this is called, but you know when um, there's like an airplane flying above head. Doppler effect. That's no? not a Doppler effect. Uh, it would. I feel like this is a. Yeah. It's some science shit that we should have remembered from eighth grade or whatever but it's like if there's a plane flying above head and it's it's engine is doing like a there's sometimes i don't know how but like there's a second tone that will like it'll start to harmonize with the like the the sound or something some you guys know what i'm talking about right like when you hear the plane it's it's almost like there's two two tones coming off of a plane and a lot of times it ends up doing like this lower fourth thing below it or something i don't know Maybe. google it but anyways i've i've always really really liked that sound and try and emulate it with fuzz pedals and just different sounds and you know buzz and blip sounds and stuff but anyways this is kind of like a really really similar thing because you're blending two drone notes together there's a little delay circuit on here so you could send the drones through delays there's this interfere button which makes it so you can like tweak the, the one of the drone notes to like go up or down and so it's just it's a really really innovative interesting different thing like tabletop noise guys like wolf eyes or whoever will have like these and be like oh my god crazy you know and you'll see like guys tweaking on like tabletops with wires all over the place but david ranger's always always like thinking what none of us are thinking about. He's always on something else, and like, always he's not. He apparently is not slowing down on like being on that other tip. So, so you, you know, when we heard it at Nam last year, I, you know, we both were just looking at each other, just going, "Oh fuck!" You know, you it's there's it seems to be there are a lot of guys bit making pedals out there, but there's rarely do we walk up to a guy's booth at Nam and just be like, both of us just go, whoa, what the fuck? This is so tight. And look at how ill it looks. And it just, I really think aesthetics are a huge part of the game. I think, you know, when you have like a company like Earthquake who has got really interesting designs, paintings on it and stuff, you know, or whatever. There's so, so many companies that it's like, to me, that is essential to the art form, to making you inspired. And he, man, he just kills it every time. Any of his other pedals, we love it. The, the you know, the Frankenstein fuzz with the, the, you know, the latch switch, you know, that shit is super tight. I love shit like that. Yeah, he's got, he's always, like, next level design, absolutely. So, Drone Ranger. All right, again, we'll do a proper one on this some other time, so I'm not going to talk about this right now. But I will say, I'm just going to click on some drones. Get this. This is I always play it D Lydian. Now I don't have to hit my low note to drone it. It's droning. Thank you. 
Anahedra by Maris, Pitch Shifting Delay. So, um, we did a very, very in-depth video on this. Uh, every time Maris co comes out with something new, they come over to the studio and they sit down with us and be like, well, first of all, we kind of dive in and just like start tweaking and they're like, oh yeah, try this, try this. But then they show us that there's even like way more layers than we had anticipated, which is the case with this thing. So it is just a pitch shifting delay, an intelligent pitch shifting delay, right? right? So you set right. the key to it. You know, I remember back in the day when, um, boss, like the harmonist or right. the, the pitch shifter stuff where you could set the key. It didn't always track the best. Right. right. Cause when I was a kid, I was like, Whoa, you could play like iron maiden sounding stuff with just one guitar now. And that was really cool. But the tracking was always a little weird on it. Tracking on this is really good. There's tons and tons of different keys and modes and all that stuff for whatever scale you're playing in. Um, and then remember they had like, there was the hard tuning option, right, which right. is like, I've, I don't know that that had ever been done in a pedal before. So that was really, really cool. There was the different feedback section. So reference, if you want to like go deep on what this pedal does and sounds like, go watch the like 45 minute video that we did on it or something. But Maris is another company where it's like, they're always, Maris doesn't even have like an, a uh, distortion pedal because they're like no no we're good on that we're i mean for all we know they're coming up with a distortion right now but they didn't even bother to come out over the last few years and be like well let's do something simple it's always ahead always they haven't done any like i mean all of their pedals can do basic things which is maybe that's the genius of maris is like you can just be you know some caveman that could plug into this and play smoke on the water or something i mean i don't know there must be a setting on here that would sound okay with smoke on the water going through <laughs> oh fuck yes there is but, i mean i the, i use this again like this is one of the ah this is one of the newer pedals um that came out that i instantly put on my uh Marilyn manson bass pedal board and i did a couple different things that i do with it but i you know i use it for the tracking of when i do an like a octave down two octave down it's just huge and then you know when you're playing big pa shit like i'll hammer this and it you feel everything moving and rumbling and i'm i love that but the tracking is so fucking unbelievable maybe even the best tracking octave i've ever come across and then i sometimes i'll just do like a little you know weird like sequence of like you know just like a minor uh i mean not a minor third but like a like a second or you know flat second just to have like some kind of weird rumble in between songs or something but again man like they don't fuck around and they i think will be one of the biggest in the future because they they have two brainiacs over there who just hammer out genius shit in every pedal. I mean, we love every one of them. I did a ton of other shit with this pedal on our video that you can watch that's on Pedals and Effects YouTube channel, but this is exactly how I use it with Manson because I just want to rumble with low octaves. So this is the octaves down and check how well it tracks and check how low it goes. the pedal ever. Okay, there's the top 10 for 2019. Who are you looking forward to next year? Any anybody like have you have you have you heard anything? Are you you thinking somebody's gonna come at us with something? Yeah, Red Panda will. Uh, yeah. The um, Game Changer Audio guys, if they can somehow figure out a way to manufacture that thing with the fan, oh, remember that's that? Right, right. Or the little yeah. motors, the gears, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I don't know if that'll cool. come out next year but if that does that will be really cool yeah i mean it's kind of like it's the usual suspects 
Yeah. There's a really, really, really good chance that next year's top ten will resemble manufacturer wise this year's because it's like I mean right do you know what I mean I hear you I really think I also think I think Keeley's got something up his sleeve mm-hmm. I I don't know like I'm not throwing rumors out there yeah I don't read Reddit so I didn't pick it up there but he's got heat so yeah, and he true. now he puts out so much shit I don't know he's like he's like the prolific dude out there who's constantly putting shit out so I mean there's a reason this top ten is the way it is because it's the best stuff that I mean we're aware of, so yes. you know, pro- yes. good chance is going to be the best stuff next year, and there'll maybe be some, you know, people that slide in there, and like th- I know the Mantic guys are like I just saw them recently; mm. they're working on something. They're kind of like in the lab, so you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there brainstorming stuff. And so we encourage all you pedal builders put the lab coats on. Get in there; it's winter. You're going to be snowed in anyway, and just come up with some shit. Thank <laughs> you.